the Pythagorean Inequalities Theorem. This is our last lesson for 5.7, we're at 5.7d, which means there's 16 total videos for Chapter 5 that are in the Geometry Playlist. We can use side lengths to classify a triangle as acute or obtuse. Here's the Pythagorean Inequalities Theorem. It states in triangle ABC, C is the length of the longest side. It's the hypotenuse. And if C squared is greater than A squared plus B squared, then triangle ABC is an obtuse triangle. And if C squared is less than A squared plus B squared, then the triangle ABC is an acute triangle. And as we move forward, I want you to make sure that you understand how to put radical expressions in their simplest form. If you want to learn from scratch, you can watch Algebra 1, Chapter 11, and if you just want a quick review of what you learned last year in Algebra 1, you can watch the video we just made, 5.6b, okay? To understand why the Pythagorean inequalities are true, consider triangle ABC. If C squared is equal to A squared plus B squared, then triangle ABC is a right triangle by the converse of the Pythagorean theorem. Remember the converse says if it fits this equation, then it's a right triangle, okay? And if C squared is greater than A squared plus B squared, then C has increased. And by the converse of the hinge theorem, measure of angle C has also increased. So the measure of angle C is greater than 90 degrees, okay? Remember the hinge theorem was 5.6a and its converse, okay? And if C squared is less than A squared plus B squared, then C has decreased by the converse of the hinge theorem. So measure of angle C has also decreased, so the measure of angle C is less than 90 degrees. And we can tell if the measures can be the side lengths of a triangle. If they are, we can classify the triangle as acute, obtuse, or right. So we have 8, 11, and 13. First, we determine if the measures form a triangle. And by the triangle inequality theorem, 8, 11, and 13 can be the side lengths of a triangle. We did that in video 5.5b. And now we classify the triangle. C squared, is it equal to A squared plus B squared? We compare C squared to A squared plus B squared. And we substitute the longest side for C, so that would be 13. That's the biggest number. So is 13 squared equal to 8 squared plus 11 squared, substituting in those numbers? Well, 13 squared is 169, 8 squared is 64, and 11 squared is 121. When we add and compare them, we get 169 is less than 185. And since C squared is less than A squared plus B squared, the triangle is acute. Now look, we have 5.8, 9.3, and 15.6. So first, again, we determine if the measures form a triangle. Well, 5.8 and 9.3 added together is equal to 15.1. And 15.1 is not greater than 15.6. These can't be the side lengths of a triangle by the triangle inequality theorem. And, again, that was from 5.5b, and it states the sum of any two side lengths of a triangle is greater than the third side length. And the longer side of a triangle is the hypotenuse, so 15.6 is the largest number. It would have to be the longest side. It would have to be that third side. So these first two would have to total more than 15.6 in order for the triangle to be able to reach and close at the top, right? According to the triangle inequality theorem, all right? So we've had four lessons for 5.7 from A through D. Here's a recap of them. We learned the Pythagorean theorem can help us find an unknown side length. We learned the converse of the Pythagorean theorem can help us prove a triangle is a right triangle. And we also learned about the Pythagorean triple and that it's a set of three non-zero numbers that fit the rule a squared plus b squared equals c squared. And now the Pythagorean inequalities theorem can help us qu classify triangles as acute when c squared is less than, obtuse when c squared is greater than, or a right triangle when it's equal to, all right? And be careful as you do problems. If side lengths are given as a mix of fractions and decimals, 
or fractions and mixed numbers, first convert them all to decimals or improper fractions. So if you have a 1 and a half, a 2 and a 2 and a half, make them a 1.5, a 2.0, and a 2.5, or as improper fractions, 3 halves, 4 halves, 5 halves. And if side lengths are given in different increments, convert them to equi equivalent units first. If you have 9 inches, 1 foot, and 13 inches, make it 9 inches, 12 inches, and 13 inches, okay? Our next lesson is going to be 45 degree, 45 degree, 90 degree triangle theorem. And after that, we're going to do 30 degree, 60 degree, 90 degree triangle theorem. And finally, for 5.8c, we're going to graph irrational numbers. When we're finished with that, we're going to be moving on to chapter 6 with polygons and quadrilaterals. Okay? So I hope you're doing well. Hit that like button for me. And... Until next time, bye.